well, well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up and just had another pound of ground beef or half a kilo, if you want to say it that way. Of course, want to be wishing you well as well as it is, what is it, Wednesday? It's hump day. Yes, happy hump day. Hope you're having the best hump day possible out there in your good old cryptocurrency life. Let's get over to the live scene as there's plenty more to talk about. And yes, this is new camera, so I'm very excited about that. Can now start recording new content um, with which I really want to get started on a new options, um, just like beginner tutorials. So let's get into live scene right over here and talk a little bit about Bitcoin as we do have the next new daily, which the daily is still holding above the yellow 21 exponential moving average right here, which is coming in around uh, 3735 at the current moment in time. So overall, as long as Bitcoin's above there, it is kind of difficult to be looking for that uh, more immediate downside as that has been the impetus for support over the last, um, well, over the last four days, ever since we had this massive girthy uh, Darth Maul dildo coming on on Sunday, a bloody Sunday indeed. But my point is, is that without continuation, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's typically speaking, when you do see a major bearish engulfing dildo like this, you want to see continuation rather quickly. Now, of course, could we just be consolidating these lower t uh, in, in the lower time frames? Well, that's absolutely what we're doing right now. Uh, but you can see very easily right now the, that the range is the yellow 21 exponential at 37. We could just call it 3750 to make it, you know, a little bit more clear. And, uh, and really what I would say is the 89 exponential right here at 3960. We could just call it 3950. We do have a nice horizontal coming in right over here. But basically, this this uh, this cyan moving average. So again, as long as Bitcoin's playing within those ranges, I would look at that look at this as just consolidation, as just that. If Bitcoin breaks out of the range, if Bitcoin breaks back above thirty nine fifty, I would be looking for a run, probably to about well your prior high, very likely, but probably beyond maybe around uh, forty three hundred. Uh, maybe even 4,400, something like that, so somewhere in this range over here. Um, by the same token, if we do break onto the downside, if we do break the 21 exponential to the downside, I would be looking for a move back down to the lower end of the range. 3550 would certainly be on the menu, but uh, but personally, my thoughts would be somewhere down around 3450, something like that. If we do put on our drawing tools, you can see a little bit better, but um, the bottom of this range governed by this rising trend line, which would be meeting up with a 6.8 Fibonacci retracement relatively soon. So of course, as Bitcoin just kind of lulls around in these areas, lulls around, Yes, exactly. Um, if it lulls, you know, as long as it kind of hangs around these areas, it's not all that much to do. We can look for clues in the higher time frames, of which there is a massive one staring us right in the face right now, which I'll go over in just a second. But, but my point is, is that you know, if you want to make it very easy for yourself, as far as the, I guess you could say like the micro, not, not like the micro, what's like one step up from a micro, a mini. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I learned that lesson pretty damn, uh, actually just the other day as I was looking for a micro, a micro USB, but instead I really wanted a, a, wanted a mini, which I didn't even know that there's a difference, but apparently there is. Um, so yes, if you're looking at the mini picture, that's what I kind of be saying right now, as long as you're below the, as long as you're below 3950, I am overall bearish. I'm looking for this type of continuation of the downside, especially after a major bearish engulfing dildo like this, uh, extremely like that, that you do get continuation which we have not seen any actually we have not seen any at all um so that is suspect so technically speaking you know you'd want to see us take out the bottom of this guy at 3702 and that would likely be the triggering effect for that run down to about 35 50 maybe even a little bit lower than that um, by the same token as long as we're within this range i mean nothing's really changed and i suppose the best way to get over this is by looking at the lower time frames as we can bring up the two hour dildo time frame right here take on everything off we can see just a very obvious Obvious, uh, obvious resistance coming in around 3850 if you want to go to like the very micro picture and very obvious support around 3750 you know which does coincide with the daily 21 so that would be you know could you make a decision based off that um, on a lower time frame, I would say it's I'd say it's possible uh, two hour minimum minimum. But um, yeah, if we did break below thirty seven fifty, I would be I would be in a position. In fact, I actually did take a position just because the thing that I was speaking about yesterday and the and actually the couple days prior or actually the week prior is very you know actually did happen yesterday. Uh, let's go over here to the three day double time frame as Bitcoin has officially closed that last three day dildo below the yellow 21 exponential it was it was at 30 uh, 3804 we closed at 3797 so a little bit below but uh, but closing below is closing below so overall the reason why this is relevant to me is that the last times in the in in the past prior year that bitcoin's gotten above the 21 exponential it has signaled kind of the more mature part of that um, of that run we could say in the second that it actually breaks it back to the downside 
for the again for the last year perfectly it has led to led to continuation back onto the downs or to to the bottom of that range so let's just actually go through it the last time that we were above the 21 exponential was right here uh this was in september of last year on the run to about 7400 and then boom massive red dildo girthy red dildo coming all the way back down to the bottom out of the range now of course most of the damage was done in that first girthy red dildo but 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 we could just go to, we could just go back a few more examples and, and kind of get a, a greater perspective on this as the time before that that bitcoin was above it you know calls this like last ditch rally effort above um above eight thousand then once it breaks back below the 21 exponential where do you where do you find yourself at back down to the lows of the range at 6,000 and the time before that was right over here getting it even a little bit better a little bit more precise I would argue where it's just the very last thousand uh, dollars of this four thousand dollar run from six thousand to ten thousand once we break back down below right here below that yellow um, that that yellow moving average then the continuation all the way back down to six thousand actually and then the time before that even more precise actually just getting the double top perfectly although the first time you'll notice that we did close this guy below we did get continuation right here but it ended up reversing reversing back onto the prior high and then back down. So again, even if Bitcoin were to kind of reverse here, I would have it in my mind's eye that overall I'd be looking for the move to probably be stifled. Um, and if we were to get right back to the prior high, maybe something like this goes on. Uh, but for now, of course, we actually did close below that. So that would be what I'm looking for out of, out of the current moment in time. Now, of course, there is one caveat with this, and it's actually a pretty big caveat, and that is that in all of those examples that we looked at, Bitcoin had not just taken out the 21 exponential, but it also took out the 10 simple moving average, which is this red moving average right here. As you can see, we actually did not do that. Um, we are still healthily above it right now. It's actually coming in right around uh, 3694, which is going to line up with some other higher time frames. But I just do want to present that right now because that was one of the things I was looking for. Now, obviously, obviously, this is a three digital time frame so it can take its time to kind of resolve itself of course you know what it takes literally three days for one tick to be put in and set in stone but for right now it is quite interesting to me we do see the 55 and the 377 get ever so close to each other we do have basically a bearish posturing on just about all the other uh major moving averages um and i do believe that our higher time frame stokes are still getting pretty much sure uh, uh namely the daily stokes uh still coming down again the last few times that has actually even gotten into the more critical zone which was uh actually a few days ago on the 22nd and 23rd not right now um were were those other major tops that we were looking at as well funnily enough so again the last times that we actually saw it get this high was on that september run to 7400 before they dumped 6000 then the same thing with your august dump from from 84 to 6000 then before that was your may dump over here from 10000 to 6000 and before that was your february double top at 12000 so again you know lining up with the same sort of macro events that we're looking at as well with a 3 day delay time frame on the 21 exponential um, and then, of course, we could also make a very similar, um, a very similar predicament with the four-hour dildo time frame, which did initiate a golden cross. I believe this was last week, or, or maybe like a couple weeks now. Um, man, time just fucking time really fucking flies. I know I say this all the time, but oh my god, it really. <laughs> It's actually quite scary, to be honest with you. Um, but four hour doodle golden cross over here a couple weeks ago, that was kind of my signal to not be short that day and actually take a little bit of a long riding it up. Um, as I'm sure a lot of other people did, we caught this one like literally a couple hours right before it happened, but beautifully done and uh, resulted in a move about 17 and a half percent up lasting about seven days before this downturn. Well, again, going back into the history of Bitcoin, what has been the prior results of a cross like this of, you know, what, what have the bots and algos been proven to be doing? Doing during these crosses. Well, again, the last time that we actually even had an example of this was over here on this run to 7,400. That goes up about eight and a half percent, gets faded into over the course of a little bit under six days. Um, so again, kind of a weaker one, but gives us an idea of what that of what that cross typically, you know, what it can do. The time before that was right here. The time before that was was literally, sorry, it's actually a little bit less than that, but, uh, but about a 25% move uh, resulting in about a little under 14 days. So obviously significantly more than what we've doing what than what we've done right now i mean you know significantly more is is perspective right but we've done about 18 percent. that one was about you know 20 to 25 then the time before that was right here um resulting in another 25 percent move from from bottom to top or sorry it's actually that actually is not where the cross happened the cross happened right around here um, but again about 21 22 percent over the course of uh seven little under 17 days and then the time before that was right over here which was just a few days actually i think about five days on this one um, and about 12, 12 and a half percent. So you can kind of gauge the, gauge the relative strength of what that move was that, that we just did. Um, 
and kind of get an idea of what's, I don't want to say likely, it's, that's the wrong word to be using in, uh, in technical analysis and trading language and tra trading parlance. But what I could say is that uh, it is kind of consistent what we've seen so far. It's consistent with, with, with what the results have been in the past. Um, of course, this is, I suppose this is the way that I'm going to be looking at this. As long as we are below, you know, 38.50, if Bitcoin does break above uh, 38, if I was taking a position in here, again, it's not financial advice, I'm not financial advice, I'm just sharing kind of what I'm doing. Um, but I will be looking for a position in here and I'll be using 38.50 to kind of manage risk upon. Um, so as long as we're below 38.50, I would be looking for this to, you know, have, have pressure on it sooner rather than later um, but if we do get back above 3850 then it's probably gonna be a run back over to 3950 so I would not want to be I would not want to leave my pants down for a massive girthy green dildo like that of course 3950 not only just this kind of horizontal resistance right here which we can put in right oh, but wrong chart uh, which we can put in right here of course you know this guy this form of breakout um, but also the CMEs do have a massive gap right around that area right around 39 you know 3930 3940 which is where they closed last Friday 6 p.m. Eastern time before the uh, before the weekend session so again if Bitcoin were to rally back up around there I would be looking for a price action to be you know stifled around that area um, and again if Bitcoin does but if Bitcoin does get above 3950 if it does start closing you know two hour is above there very 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 likely that it that at the very least it gets right back to the prior highs and now my, my personal opinion is beyond you know 40 uh, 43 4400 would kind of make sense at that point in time i'd essentially just be looking at the weekly uh 21 yeah the 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 weekly yellow moving average right here at around it's actually a hair under 4400 right now so yeah in that range uh, but overall as long as, as while we're over here on the weekly i do want to always remind myself and remind uh the people out there or, or perhaps you, if you might be a longer term type trader, if you might be a longer term type minded, which I am not, which I typically don't speak towards, uh, what I'd be looking at is I'd be looking at the purple 200 exponential and the pink 200 simple moon average, whichever one gets broken first can be your next kind of macro macro direction, I suppose you could say. Although after coming off of a large downturn like this, obviously the the first interpretation is going to be bearish as far as I'm concerned as the, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend, right? So looking at this guy right here, as long as we're below, as long as we're both opening and closing weekly deals below this purple 200 exponential moving average at 41.11, have no real reason to be, oh, I have no real reason to be one bullish, but even, but even more importantly, not bearish. Uh, and you can see a very obvious rejection that we got last Sunday, um, right at the end. And again, look at the volume characters of this, and then look at the price structure. That tells us this, that all of this is likely to be is, or sorry, is to be, is to be considered one massive consolidation. Um, again, the volume signature, a dead giveaway right here. And as long as we're respecting this area, I mean, just kind of wedging ourselves into this uh, in, in, in between these two moving averages. Now, if Bitcoin does break below the 200 simple moving average right here, which is currently coming in around 33. 50, then I would be looking for new lows. Um, and by new lows, I mean like significantly lower lows um, down over here to this next blue box territory that I've marked out. Whoops, come on, charts, get ready. There we go. Uh, which encompasses the, the region between 2300 and 2600. That is also the 886 Fibonacci retracement that you see right over here, taken from a taken from a whole Fibonacci retracement from the prior mark cycle, essentially. Um, and then that actually is where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, 2015 mark cycle right here on the 886 as well, taking the same sort of uh, retracement. And obviously some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. If, the volume, if we show the volume profile, there's some massive activity being thrown down in this area. By the way, as soon as you lose this 3350 area, there is nothing doing all the way down to this next high value nodes. And then, of course, if we go over here to the BLX index, the we got the 377 exponential coming in right around there. And obviously the monthly as well, which brings me on to my next point. The monthly very, 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 10 more varies. Sound like a fucking robot right now. Sorry about that. I do apologize. But extremely important as we are one day away. We're one day away from the, ne from the next monthly being set in stone again. Time just fucking flying by. This is insane. What the fuck? I need a time machine but <laughs> when i look at something like this over here i do want to be cognizant of the importance of where this one closes because we're actually right around a massive massive area that will really account for a lot in bitcoin as far as i'm concerned as, as far as i as far as i do like more long-term analysis and that is the green 55 exponential moving average right here which you can see bitcoin broke for the first time in its ever in its overall history ever in January, the the uh, our past month. Now, Bitcoin will have both a chance to both open and close below it on this current month of February, and as we did open below it. But it is currently trading above right now at the as the 
55 exponential is 3678 right now. 36, we could just call it 3670 because that's what it, where it's going to be coming around if it actually does come into, you know, into contact. Um, so if Bitcoin does close below it, that would be the first time that we actually have what I consider like a confirmed kill of a moving average. And then the next level I'd be looking at is down around here, around the, around the cyan moving average, which is where? Right around 2,500, which is right in the thick of that of that blue box ter that ter territory that we just spoke about. Now, of course, while I don't believe that the lows for Bitcoin, and while I do strongly believe that Bitcoin moves itself lower, does that mean that it has to happen like right here, right now? No, it does not. I mean, looking at this right now, you do. I do recognize this um, as per the shape and volume statistics, which is not available on the BLX index uh, as consolidation. And as these consolidate and kind of work themselves around this uh, this green this green exponential moving average right here. I would be cognizant of these two moving averages over here, the red and the yellow, as they approach each other lower periods, if they cross, then I'd be looking for this consolidation to be resolved to the downside. It's just going to tell you that the, that more bots, more algos are going to start to intensify their sell programs, which very likely to happen. Um, very likely to happen if uh, if we do close below the green 55 exponential moving average. That's how I'd interpret all of this. Now, of course, could Bitcoin close above the 55? Yes, 100%. 100%, but of course, I need to see where it actually closes tomorrow. That is when I'll make the response to price action. But again, going off of the higher time frames, looking at we, what we looked at with the, with the 21 exponential on the three day, looking at we looked at from the prior um, expectations of that, and just the overall, well, massive bearish and and dildo that we just set, set in stone on Sunday. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, my personal opinion is that we probably do end below there, but hey, I don't trade my fucking opinion. I do not trade my opinion. I'll wait for this. To, I'll wait for this to actually resolve itself tomorrow. It's only one more day. And remember, I mean, most, I mean, for, for the most part, most, most of the action does not change even within a couple of months. I mean, everything's pretty much the same. It's been, it's been the same story ever since this reversal, this reversal formation right here, this pair of tweezer top dildos, follow through down. That's, that's all it's been for over a year. Um, so again, uh, if Bitcoin did close above the 55 though, I would be looking for an extended correction to the upside. Um, it does not mean that the bearish market is over. If Bitcoin closes above the 55, the way that I would start to, I, I would start to consider that the bearish market is over. If three things happened, uh, first things first, I'd going back to the weekly over here, I need to see a weekly deal, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential that would get you started, but not not all the way there, although I drastically changed my tone if that were to happen. Uh, the monthly, of course, the yellow 21 exponential, as long as we're below there, if Bitcoin, it, I, I'm not in any, I'm not in any hurry to call this bear market over. If Bitcoin gets above the monthly 21 at 53.50, then yeah, I, I would actually probably not want to be bearish. <laughs> and of course, the third and final and most important, but you're probably going to know beforehand, probably with with regards to the monthly as well, is uh, is if Bitcoin could get back above the, the 6,000 area, the area that has spent about a year going sideways upon before breaking down onto this massive, aggressive downturn over here. By the way, just as an aside, we kind of have a similar setup to what we had in 2014, 2015, but you just kind of get walked down to the next, you know, Exp uh, exponential actually um as you do see this this yellow 21 kind of having a very similar reaction of price action as you do see with this green guy over here so again uh, there has been some sort of mental masturbation going on around there saying that uh, Bitcoin first in, in its first market cycle, it bottomed out the 100 simple moon average. Then the second, it bottomed out the 200 simple moon average. Then the third thir uh, third is which is what we're on right now is going to bottom out the 300 simple moon average, which would actually be somewhere around this like low 2000 area as well. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, like, does that make sense? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, it works until it doesn't. And three t three times makes a trend, but we don't have three times. It's the problem. So, um, I don't have a strong opinion on it. But hey, I do want to show this right over here. I do want to describe the areas that I need to see in order to get out of bear market mode. But of course, I'm 100% open to that happening. I don't want to join any sort of gang. I don't want to sort of join the bear gang or the bull gang. But when it's still in a bearish market, I'm gonna be fucking bearish. Um, so yeah, I think we spoke about the higher time frames ad nauseum. Let's go check out GBDC. GBDC, uh, massive, nasty, girthy red dildo closing at the end of the day, actually taking us below the yellow 20 minute potential and destroying the 10 simple along the way. This looks like a nice, would you want to call this? An, it's not, it's technically non island top, but it is a reversal dildo with follow through to the downside. We do have our daily stokes. Are they crossed down yet? No, they have not. They're hinting at it, but they're not quite there just yet. Although when markets open back up, we'll get the next tick on that. And I'm going to 
would imagine that it probably does gain a little bit of momentum in that direction. Um, but same thing with your daily RSI, bearish divergence all the way through, and back below the exponential on there. Again, I mean, this is just what we're looking at over here. It's just another lower high, actually. Now, if I do put on my drawing tools, it should be denoted that this diagonal trend line right here, which was holding in this initial kind of descending triangle uh, consolidation, which broke up to the upside. And this is an example of something that's technically not supposed to happen, right? But of course, there is variability in this. And this is why I always say, I don't care what you call a pattern. I only care about how you respond around, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, around the supporting resistance. And this one broke to the upside. So fair enough. Although with a move like this, and then immediately coming back down to test this area, not necessarily the best signal. Uh, and this is what you see a lot of the time in a, in, a, in a bear market, you'll see a bull break, and then it'll get faded, uh, and, and essentially become a trap. Uh, but of course, that means that this area needs to break first. That's four dollars and twenty nine cents. I'd imagine that we probably do come back down and test it today formally. But I want to see if it actually breaks. If it does break by end of day, well, extremely likely to come back down to to to, to the prior lows and probably beyond. Um, so yeah, that is worth that. That certainly is worth talking about. I think that all of our medium term time oscillators are switching around. We got our four hour Stokes coming down. We got our four hour RSI printing divergences and coming down as well. Four hour jewel getting in the mix as well. Uh, not a perfect sell signal, but did give a sell signal right here. Not bad like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd be saying on that. Again, critical area right here about four to, uh, four dollars and twenty. Let's call it four dollars twenty seven and a half cents. Um, okay, so going on to Bitcoin now. We don't. We kind of skipped over the medium time frames. All of the medium time frames are actually headed up right now. So if I did want to say a contingency to what I'm saying on the higher time frames, the lower time frames actually looks like they want to rally. We got our four-hour Stokes headed up healthily. We got our eight-hour Stokes uh, fresh cross up. We got our 10-hour Stokes fresh cross up. 12-hour uh, Stokes have not crossed up, but you can see that all the medium time frames have kind of uh, crossed up right now and are actually gaining momentum to the upside. So again, this 3850 uh, resistance right here, extremely important, extremely, extremely important. As long as Bitcoin's below there, uh, you know, could could play this consolidation. Um, but if Bitcoin does break above 3850, I don't see anything stopping me from 3950. So again, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, I'm not necessarily looking for longs, but if that were to happen, I might reposition up here. Um, so again, that's kind of what I'm thinking right there. Uh, overall, mm, yeah, overall, I'm not getting too much from this from, from all my different uh, indicators. What about the six hour? Yeah, six hour stoves are, they're actually down right now. They're kind of uh, kind of looking weak right now. Um, but again, I am hesitant to really call this one either which way at the current moment in time. I do want to give this one some time <laughs> really to, to kind of resolve itself because, because of the implications. If it does get above this area, it's likely to rally a lot more and that would offer potential for a much better position. Again, as again, very, very important. As long as Bitcoin is below this cyan moving average at 39, we could just call it 39.50. I am going to be looking for shorts. Um, as, I'd, as I'd imagine, if we do pop back up around here, it's going to be ma it, sh it, it likely will act as massive resistance. Um, but then again, that also means if you get above it, then the then the story has changed. It's my phone just gets ever so crazy over here. Jesus Christ, man! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just want to say come on man what the fuck what the fuck man um okay cool so 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 let's get on over to mr buterol let's see if there's any clues in mr buterol as opposed to uh mr bitcoin as mr buterol is at 142 and a few odd cents but basically a very similar setup as long as you're below this 152 area i would be looking for this to be massive resistance even if we do pop back up yes you do have your 10 simple coming around 146 and a half but same same kind of deal here. If you do break 135, this is this is the this is the major thing. If you break 135, then very likely to come back down all the way to about 116, 117. Uh, probably retrace all the way to the bottom of the 618 Fibonacci retracement. By the way, this looks like we have a nice uh, trend line forming here. Nice trend line forming here, which would technically you know make it a, a rising channel, rising uh, rising wedge, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Typically bearishly resolved pattern. Um, we have the same sort of setups on the uh, on our high time from Stokes uh, daily coming down. I think two day are confirmed down. Yeah, no, two day are not confirmed down, but they will be if they stay here. If price action is here or lower by end of day, as we do get another two day delta time, uh, or sorry, two day, two day delta coming back into the mix uh, later tonight. But overall, that's what I'm kind of looking at on this guy. Uh, daily looks like a front run of the 200 simple over here, and then down as it does start to get wrestled, wrestled, wrestled by all these movement averages once again. By 
by the way, it did actually break out of the long-term downtrend line, um, going all the way over here from May, right? From May at 800, it actually broke out of there uh, a few, uh, about a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, 11 days ago. Um, and so if we were to pop back down, we're probably going to come back and retest that trend line, especially when Mr. Beatles is, is basically being run off of, a rough run off of an event right now. It has constant to const. I don't know how to say that word. Constantinople. There we fucking go. <laughs> As some sort of an upgrade coming in the next day or two, uh, which again, an upgrade in Bitcoin land and an upgrade or just events in general prevent uh, produce event psychology. So you get a run up leading up into the into the event as big market movers will buy up, creating the illusion of massive bullish pressure, like the world's the world's problems are going to be solved. And then, of course, you know this was an event that everyone fucking knew about for months and months prior. Does it change the world? Not all that much. Um, and then once the event happens, typically now the big market movers who bought up, who bought you know the smart money bind right around here. Now they have people to distribute on. They have people to sell to. As there's going to be buyers along the way. As people, you know, the the average retail is going to think that this like actually changed the world. And so it's now time to get long at any cost. We're not realizing that overall the picture has not changed in the last uh, year. I mean, we'll we'll really um, you could say you could say the last year, but even. I'd say I'd say May of last year is where it became very abundantly clear. Um, just lower lows and lower highs uh, the whole way through. It's it's most most visually apparent on the weekly. Look at the look at the last weekly. A clear and obvious rejection of the yellow twenty one exponential. Um, and again, you have that nice falling off in volume. I mean, this this to me is just an, another massive consolidation forming. Um, so yeah, again, for Mr. Buterall to kind of get out of the bearish market as far as I'm concerned, needs to close a weekly above two ten, two fifteen, something like that. Let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? She's at forty-five and a half dollars. Uh, did Mrs. Litecoin? No, Mrs. Litecoin did get shuffled back below the twenty-one exponential by end of week uh, before the close. But Mrs. Litecoin actually looking okay. Mrs. Litecoin is the best argument against my bias because Mrs. Litecoin is it has been the most resilient in these areas. Uh, holding above the pink two hundred simple moving average right here is good, and as long as you're above both the pink two hundred and the, and the yellow twenty-one exponential, I mean, I it's that these are pretty strong supports um yeah we do have major bearish divergence we have three strikes one two three and down we do have daily soaps coming down as well daily jewel did give a sell signal right here um but i am i'm not i'm not a, it's not a perfect sell signal i want i want the perfect perfect one if it's going to be a legitimate um massive trade and we don't necessarily have that right now so what, so what i would say be saying about this guy is that hey if you actually do break 43 and a half dollars uh then then the downside very likely coming back down to 90 39 but for the but for the point in for, for the time being i mean it's it's holding above there and it's looking okay um, if it does, if it does get some upwards momentum, I'd be looking for resistance right around forty-seven and a half dollars. Uh, obviously, the two hundred exponential, uh, the overhead and, and most important resistance, as as it's been unable to both open and close a daily dildo above it, which is all the way at fifty and a half dollars, uh, which would be my more traditional way of doing things. But hey, it is it is acting okay here. Uh, let's look at the let's look at the higher time frame oscillators. Uh, two day Stokes hinting at a cross down. Uh, two-day RSI back below the exponential. Two-day jewel getting up there, but not. I mean, it's not really a signal or anything like that. Uh, three-day, three-day Stokes actually crossing down as well, um, but need another couple days to actually confirm that. And yeah, did lose a 55 right there, but overall, I'd be, you know, it's I'd still be cautious. I'd still be cautious. There's, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of disagreements in these charts right now um, between some like this and what we just looked at. Um, let's also get on over to. Do you want to do Zcash, Electric Coin, whatever the fuck they call it now? Um, great name, but another rejection with a lower high and likely to have some, <laughs> likely to have some follow through again. When I look at the alts, that's when I get more bearish. Uh, yeah, Zcash does look like it wants to have a rally back up to about fifty four and a half dollars, but I'd be looking for that to probably be rejected. This is a pretty ugly chart. Uh, what about Bcash? So we got Zcash, Bcash, um, same thing. Oh, actually, already got rejected from the ten simple right there. Uh, basically the same fucking chart, just making lower highs. Uh, Tron Cash, Tron Cash, basically the same fucking thing. <laughs> basically, well, a little bit different. Uh, trying to trying to kind of do its own thing right here, right? Um, we could maybe, you know, if I wanted to present the more lenient case, I'd say, hey, it's closer than most things, but uh, it needs to maintain above 2.4 cents. As long as it's above there, maybe you could make the argument that this is an ascending triangle, but that, that was a pretty nasty last uh, rejection. Uh, my, my heart says that this likely breaks, and we go on to the downside somewhere right around uh, 
is that two point wait what two, okay sorry 2.4 cents is what i was looking at and i'd be looking for it to come down to about 2.15 cents something like that man something like that these damn these damn uh these damn cones too difficult to read when it's like that many decimal places um neo neo cash i mean basically you got the same sort of rising channel uh thing going on that we see in mrs litecoin and mr butterall mr buttersworth but overall above all these moving averages and, and hanging it high actually okay <laughs> again it would it would be it would be an argument against a lot of the shit that i'm saying um but overall just a very ugly chart just lower highs and lower lows for over a year not fucking good eos cash same thing uh but but actually the closest out of all of them or, or was the closest out of all them, had, had a pretty aggressive sell-off over here. So yeah, not so much anymore. Uh, support 332, resistance uh, 369. Uh, Mr. Ripple Cash, where's Mr. Ripple Cash? Uh, over here, 318. Um, yeah, still, you know you know what Mr. Ripple's cash is doing right now? And this is what makes me a little bit more bearish on the overall market as I think this chart's a little bit easier to read, is that uh, even with the news the other day that Coinbase is going to save Ripple Cash by listing it, which just means you have another place to sell ripple is what it is what it comes down to uh in a bear market <laughs> i think that's what most people are going to be doing um what is this i mean this is, this just looks like a nice ascending triangle with a very obvious uh declining resistance trend line that's been governing all these highs right here and we could actually make a measure move on this baby as well so now we actually have we actually have something to look at and of course this comes with the caveat that as long as we are below 34 and a half cents as long as we're closing daily dollars below 34 and a half cents i'm bearish on this guy but again i don't <laughs> i don't short xrp because i don't i don't play all coins to begin with but i would never short xrp to begin with anyways uh this measure would be pointing pointing all the way down to low 20 cents high high teens High teens at around 18 cents, um, which is kind of what I'd be looking at if this were to break down. I mean, this is not going to look like a good chart if that were to happen. Uh, it's going to start to look a little bit more unhealthy. But, uh, you know, to its credit, to, to something like Ripple and Litecoin um, and probably a few others that have actually been around for quite some time, you know, before 2015 especially, they have survived a prior bear market. So they actually have bases to go back to. Ripple has a base to go back to. Now, what Brad Garlic House doesn't want you to know is that that base is all the way at about six cents, or I mean, or if you want to be even more disgusting, three and a half cents. But my point is, is that you know it it, it has proved itself in the in the times past. I'm not saying that's going to go down to those levels. I'm just saying that it has it has a base of support, unlike something that was born after 2015 that has not survived through a past prior bear market. It doesn't have it doesn't have the evidence that it's done so yet. It doesn't mean that it can't. But we don't have a historical, you know, way to really be going off of is my point. So again, understanding these things, you know, do matter when it comes down to uh, just check, just check my mic over here. Good mic. All right, good mic. Uh, hopefully the sound is good as well. I'll actually, be getting a new microphone probably soon as well too. So I'm really excited about that. But um, you know, understand understand that something like this actually does <laughs> technically have a structure to go back to, whereas something like a Neo does not. It is not uh, something like a something like a Bcash does not. Something like an EOS does not. Uh, even Stellar. I don't know if Stellar was around in 2015 or it was it was in 2015, but I think it just came right after the prior bear market. But you can see that it does kind of have a prior base in a way. Uh, Stellar Cash, though, uh, weekly, weekly is kind of curling around, actually. Weekly is kind of curling around if I do want to look at it like this. Um, I don't have a strong opinion on this one. Uh, Stellar Cash does want to cross up on the stokes it the daily does no the daily looks nasty and daily looks bad uh, yeah another lower high massive hidden bearish divergence by the way as well yeah even on a three-day uh one two massive uh, divergence there confirmed as a local high as well so i would be looking for this to probably probably carry on through what about the two-day delta time frame not really telling us all that much rejection of the 21 daily um yeah, I mean, da daily range is the same. I, they, they, they all look the, about the same. What are we basically doing on in, uh, in Stellar right now? We're doing something like this, right? Another massive rising channel, or do you want to call it a, an ascending broadening wedge? I don't care what you call it. Typically a pattern of bearish distribution. Um, so yeah, let's get back on, on over to Mr. Bitcoins, and we can probably start to wrap this bitch up. Oh, I should I, I forgot to go over this. Let's go over the longs and shorts of it all. I forgot to, uh, to completely talk about that. But of course, I want to be looking at the underlying market dynamics to understand you know where where the ship is most likely turned you know what what is the more likely thing to be happening and of course when you look at the longs and the shorts we have a drastic um we have a drastic difference between them we have over we have about twenty five and a half thousand open longs versus under eighteen thousand open shorts so uh, so heavily in favor of the longs that is not good why is that not good because historically speaking when shorts get this low and and actually also within this um where is my is my shorts right here yeah, it is my shorts. 
apparently these ones got messed around. Sorry about that, guys. One second. Okay, cool. There we go. Everything's in order now. OCD is satisfied. Um, but whoops, stop phone. Um, but basically, when I'm looking at something like this guy right over here, uh, for the past year, every time that big, every time that the shorts have gone into this into this red box territory, it has spelled doom, not moon, but doom for Bitcoin. It has been lined up with a major massive dump. So when we're looking at all of the things that we began this video with, kind of like bringing it full circle and, and bringing in the underlying market dynamics to kind of confirm this, each and every time that we've gotten into this red box territory, it has not been good. It has been major dump city. I mean, this was, again, this was the beginning of your of your February dump from 12,000 to 6,000 last year. This was your May dump from 10,000 to 6,000 last year. This was your August dump from 8,400 to 6,000 last year this was your november dump from six thousand to three thousand and we're once again in this area now of course it can stay in this area for quite some time as we've been saying but uh, as you saw over here but uh it is it's on the radar is what i'm trying to say it's on the radar as each and every time in the past year this has been the result uh, let's go in the fear, the crypto fear and greed index, which is actually taken out of 39 right now, which is not all that bad. Um, it's basically a little bit of fear, but, uh, we are actually at a 69 just the other day, which was the second highest you've seen this thing tick in the last year. The only other t higher time was in literally a year ago in February last year at 12,000. So people were more optimistic yesterday or sorry, a few days ago than they were at any other point in, t uh, uh, any other point in time for Bitcoin in the past year, which is very revealing and shows the massive capacity for dissonance in this space where Bitcoin, I would argue, is in a much worse posturing over here than it was at any other time in the past year as Bitcoin was still above 6,000 and still, you know, had it perhaps had a chance to, to remain above there. Um, but people are even more excited for that. And it had not taken out any of the macro things that we've been looking for. Again, the weekly 200, the monthly 21, and just the overall 6,000 level. Um, so people getting very excited. And of course, each and every time that this thing has spiked up, especially above the 50 mark, which again, it was above six, it was around 69 the other day, uh, has lined up with major dumps as well. I mean, again, this is your double top at 12,000. This was your top at 10,000. This was your top at 8,400. This was your top at... Uh, well, right before breaking 6,000. And then once again, even people even more excited than all those times, except for the, except for February of last year. So again, you know, keep that in mind. Um, keep that in mind as it's not a fully, a fully formed factor in and of itself, but it is something that I do pay attention to. And it's something that I do want to be cognizant of as this area starts to resolve itself. And we do start to see the etchings of the higher time frame starting to switch around. And historically speaking, that has been, you know, a decent setup. So again, um, I would, if I want to be super careful, what I would be saying is I'll be saying, wait until the 12 hour, 200 simple breaks, which is around 3720. If that actually breaks, then yes, uh, we kind of have the same sort of marking that each and every time that Bitcoin gets above it, it's not too long that it actually gets back below it again. Same sort of deal as what we looked at before. And, uh, that would probably lead to a nice dumpage at around 35, 50, I'd imagine something like that. Um, but overall, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Um, I think I've covered just about everything that I want to say. Uh, I think it can be very easily synth 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 synthesized down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Synthesized down. I have a, I, I, I apparently have like a terrible lisp um, to just this area right here. Uh, daily 20, 20 exponential moving average at uh, 3750 as long as you're above there. Don't want to be too damn bearish. If you break below there, I'm looking down towards the lower end of the range around 3550, maybe even 3450. And then if that area breaks, then we can talk about getting the prior lows and beyond. Uh, by the same token, as long as you're below 30, 3950 to the upside, I'm, I'm going to be looking for overall shorts in this in this scenario. If you get above 3850, probably do rally and see those see that mid 3900 number. But if Bitcoin gets stopped around that 3950 area, then that would also line up with the CMEs filling the gap and likely finding some resistance there. If Bitcoin does get above 3950, then very, 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 very likely to move on onwards and upwards to the 42 and beyond level. I'll be, I'll be thinking to myself. So again, that's going to do it for today. Hope that the uh, hope that the new camera was uh, was decent. Uh, I'm going to work on getting started with the options actually now, just because now it's uh, it's a much clearer picture. So it could be better, um, perhaps. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Hopefully we can can get some actual action because that would be a lot better for I'm sure everyone here because, well, ain't nobody got fucking time to look at the same goddamn chart all day, huh? Uh, anyways, hope that you're having a great day. I want to be wishing you well and I'll see you soon. Take care.